Why, hello there, everybody. How are you doing today? It's me, again. And yes, again, I'm here to give you yet another update. It's bright and early Monday morning, and no, my phone is not going one ringy dingy. Yet, it's going to. It's going to. Now, I want to I want to remind you all of something. I want to remind you all of think back. We're going to go way back to last year to the debates, the presidential debates. And you all have probably seen this clip about 7,000 times. You know, the one where Hillary says it's a uh, uh, it's a good thing that somebody with your temperament isn't in charge of our laws. And then President Trump said, well, uh, yeah, because if I was, you'd be in jail. And everybody went, yay, 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 yay. What went right over your heads, <laughs> right over, is what Hillary said. The, she said, and again, go back and listen to the tape, listen to the clip. It, there is not hard to find. It's a good thing that someone like you, someone with your temperament, is not in charge of our laws. Uh, that's the problem. She's just telling you. She's saying exactly what she is. She is above the law. She, oh, light bulbs coming on. She gets to decide what the law means, what the law says. Light bulbs coming on. When the law is broken, when the law is violated, she gets to say that. No, the law is in charge. The law is the standard. The law is the agreed upon standard. Our laws are, are voted on by the people. Period. There is a, there is a standard that, must be, that, that, that has been set for making a law in the country, and that standard is, just go read the Constitution. Oh, that's the problem. You all don't want to operate by the Constitution. And the reason why y'all don't want to operate by the Constitution is because the, the authority structure that the Constitution relies upon is, oh, 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 I'm going to get your feelings hurt. Almighty God. But that's the problem in, the, in a nutshell. Men, flesh and blood beings, believing that they are above, in charge of the law. And you're seeing exactly what happens when man operates that way. You've got no choice but to overlook because no matter how good, no matter how just, no matter how supposed righteous a man is, it's impossible for any man to fulfill the law. At some point in time, Somebody's going to violate the law, some aspect to some degree, whether it be a speeding ticket, a jaywalking, something of that case, something of that nature. Okay, there is no the the, the the solution. It's impossible. It's impossible for a human being to go throughout their entire life without violating either man's law or violating God's law. It's that simple. Now, the problem is those who believe that they decide, just like Hillary, again, what did she say in that debate? She said, it's a good thing that someone with your temperament isn't in charge of the law. No, the law is in charge of the law. The law is the standard, is the agreed upon standard that we are all to meet. The problem is we've just lowered the standard. Now there is basically no standard. 
So the question, the, the only question that you have to ask yourself is, are you going to meet the standard of the law, or are you just going to sit there and continue to be a criminal and uh, just continue to ignore the law? Ignoring the law is the same as violating the law. Let me say that again. Ignoring the law, ignoring the lack, of, ignoring the lack of apl apl applying the law, or ignoring the lack of enforcement of the law, when we all can see that the law has been violated, is, well, silence is consent. You are violating the law. So says the law. So, again, what are you going to do? The vast, the biggest reason why you all are so scared is, well, one, you know that you, that you at some, to some degree, have violated the law. Period. Period. You know you have done some kind of wrong. Now, the wrong that you have probably done are probably little minuscule things. You know, jaywalking, speeding, that kind of thing, making a right-hand turn without putting on your blinker, that kind of stuff. Okay? The kind of laws that these people have been violating. These people have been overlooking murderers. These people have been unleashing threats upon us. These people steal, just like they've done to me, people's entire lives, labeling them criminals when they have, there's no record of anyone doing any, of anyone violating a crime. Period. That's what they did to me. And that's why they're scared to death of me. For 20 years it has said on my record that I was arrested for and charged with in court. Hello, there's a felony case file sitting right down there at the Jacks, at the, in the Fourth Circuit, uh, uh, in the Fourth Circuit, Circuit Court, that says that I was arrested for lewd and lascivious sexual battery and charged with in court. Lewd and lascivious sexual battery, just to keep it simple for some of you stupid people, means that I had some type of sexual, I had some type of sex with a child under the age of 16, either orally, orally, anally, or vaginally. There is no record of anyone. Listen, listen carefully. There is no record of anyone by the name of Kerry Nelson in the entire United States of America ever, ever, committing that type of crime, let alone a record of me. There is not a record of me committing any kind of crime. But why? I'm not a criminal. I'm a Christian. I'm a preacher. I'm an evangelist. That's a problem. It's been on my record for 20 years. Been on my record for 20 years. And because of what they did to me, again, two view channel, I can't explain that. I can't explain it to you in five minutes. That's y'all's problems. Y'all got the attention span of a gnat. It's okay. I don't have to convince you. All I got to do is just keep telling the truth. I don't have to explain why it's there. They've got to explain why it's there. Because, hello, they take the oath. They're the ones that put it there. I didn't put it there. They did. They did. Because what was ha what happened to me on 12-3-1997, I was falsely detained slash imprisoned, kidnapped, and held for ransom by the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, the Fourth Circuit State Attorney's Office, as well as one as well as two judges. They didn't realize it. They prosecuted a false arrest. They set a $25,000 bond for a crime that doesn't exist, had no victim, 
and no evidence of any crime happening, meaning uh, there was no crime. Meaning it wasn't a bond, it was a ransom. And they didn't realize that they were prosecuting a false arrest, that they had prosecuted a false arrest until the next day, after all the paperwork had been filed. Because of that situation, they tried to cover it up, and all the people involved in the cover-up stopped being attorneys, law enforcement officers, and judges. Meaning they were impersonating judges. And all of that culminated, ended up being, one, one, of, the, one of the attorneys was Terrence Martin, and he was the one who made a plea deal with one Donald Smith who 21 days after getting out of jail kidnapped, raped, and murdered 8-year-old Cherish Periwinkle. That's why I'm going to keep telling the truth. That's what they're scared to death of. These people have some serious issues. There's no legal lawful reason for anything that they've done to me and there is no legal lawful reason. Cherish Periwinkle. Listen very closely, people. The eight-year-old little girl, Cherish Periwinkle, on June 21st, 2013, should have never, ever, ever been kidnapped, raped, and murdered. And they just had the trial for him, Donald Smith. Just last month, right here in downtown Jacksonville, and the very judge that Terrence Martin lied to, was was overseeing it. I've called her up. How come they had, well, why isn't they, why aren't they getting back to me? Because they're caught. They believe that they are above the law. Now, folks, what exactly are you going to do about it? What exactly are you going to do about it? Me, I'm just going to keep telling the truth. What you do with the truth is between you and the truth, and what the truth does to you is between you and the truth. I just tell the truth. Same situation, again, on the very same day that, that Donald Smith was found guilty of kidnap, raping, and murdering eight-year-old Cherish Periwinkle, right down here in downtown Jacksonville in 2018, is the very same day that Cruz went down there into that school and killed all those innocent kids. Neither situation had to happen. It's that simple. Now, what are you going to do about it? Don't ask me what I'm going to do about it. I've been doing. I've been reporting crimes. I've been reporting crimes. I've been reporting crimes. Again, the problem is I've been reporting crimes to fakes and frauds and counterfeits, otherwise known as criminals. Now, what are you going to do about it? When are you, when are you going to demand? Because we live in a constitutional republic. I can't force you. I'm not going to make you. I'm not going to shame you. I'm not going to bully you. I'm not going to mock you. I'm just going to stay, keep standing here and reporting the crimes. You don't like it? Well, maybe that's because, well, you're faking a fraud yourself. And you don't like being outed. But I know what is going on. I know, I know Almighty God is, mo is moving upon me real law enforcement hearts. And they're tired of these people. They're tired of, of the fakes and frauds as well. Because they're hearing more and more people like me. Now, those who have experienced exactly what I've experienced and have felt like that there's nothing that they can do, they're coming, they're saying, okay, how come, how come they haven't come done anything to you? Well, because I'm, I'm doing exactly what the law says to do, but more importantly, I'm doing exactly what my Creator told me to do. I am going through this simply so you all don't have to. I'm going through this because I am not going to give credit to, to some man. I told you all back in October of 2015, when my situation is resolved, and it's going to be resolved 
very soon, you will know two things. One, it was Almighty God who resolved it by applying and enforcing His law, the law that He has authored, established, and gives His authority to. And the second thing that you're going to learn, find out, the second thing that you're going to learn is that when Almighty God tells you to do something, you should never, ever, ever be afraid to do it. Especially when he's telling you to stand up to a bunch of fakes and frauds and counterfeits. The only question that remains is, what exactly are you going to do? Because, my friend, you cannot unring a bell. You cannot unsee the light. And you cannot unknow the truth. So now, what exactly are you going to do? Well, I'm going to encourage you to get into a relationship with your Creator. Seek your Creator, otherwise known as Jesus Christ. Get into a personal relationship with Him. The only way you can do that is to read the Word of Almighty God. Repent. Turn away from your sins. Ask for forgiveness. Am I nervous? No. Nope. Not nervous at all. Calm and peaceful. I'm not shaming. I'm not mocking anybody. Why? Because they're doing a bang up job of shaming and mocking themselves all on their own. I'm just going to keep sitting here telling the truth. That's all I'm going to do. Keep telling the truth because it is the knowledge of the truth that makes men free. I'm sending captives free. I'm sending all those, all of those who have experienced injustice, they're all looking at me and saying, okay, how come you're not getting mad? Because I have a relationship with my Creator. You get to know Him. You get to know the one who has established the law. You get to know the one who has authored the law, who gives the law its authority. Then if you are in a good relationship with Him, you will not even think about violating the law. You will not, you will no longer trust man because you know the Creator. The only question that remains again is, folks, what exactly are you going to do? As for me, I'm just going to keep telling the truth. I'm just going to keep reporting these crimes because I know I serve a just God a righteous God, a holy God. And again, the 23rd Psalms. He does not lead me to destruction. <laughs> he prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Now, I'm going to keep trusting in my God. Because I, because I know my God has never failed me. Just saying.